So with this second video on beat repeat, I'm going to show you a clever mapping uh, that I usually use for my performances. It, it, it uses beat repeat as a very spontaneous effect by using the repeat switch. Let's go and grab the beat repeat and place it onto the master channel here, just before my limiter. Now let's watch carefully the, the mapping I'm going to do. I'm going to go into MIDI map mode. I'm going to assign the, the grid here to one fader. Yep. I'm going to assign the repeat switch to the same fader and the on and off bypass switch to the same fader again. Now I'm going to go into my MIDI mapping browser over here and I'm going to set the on and off bypass switch to 1 and 0. You know why I'm doing this now. It is so that as soon as I raise the fader the effect actually turns itself on. So when I'm not using the effect it's off. It's not dragging any CPU away from my computer. Same thing is going to go with the repeat switch here. I'm going to do the 1 and 0 thing. So as soon as I raise the fader I'm switching this switch on and I'm capturing the incoming signal. I stop scanning the incoming signal and I'm capturing and keeping in the buffer whatever was playing at that very moment I raised the fader. Now the grid here, if you look at it now, as I move the fader up and down, the grid is actually going uh, a bit too high, 256. I do not like this effect, it's far too drastic for me. Uh, and I could also revert, invert its range, you see, because at the moment when I'm up on the fader, the hardware fader, the grid is at one bar, meaning it's not actually doing anything, so I need to invert this. Let's go back into MIDI map mode, into my browser, into the grid. So not only do I want to reduce its range to maybe 24, but I am also going to right click on grid here and choose the invert range setting here. That's it. So now when I raise my fader, it's actually going up for me. It's actually matching my physical movements, yeah? There we are, this is all set up. Let's hear it now in context. It's all about the moment you're going to raise that fader. Whatever moment you raise the fader means we stop scanning the incoming signal and we, we, we're starting manipulating whatever is in the buffer. Let's do it. I'm always raising that slightly before the drop happens. I've got a very nice effect here now. So you see it really matters enormously when you raise the fader, you see? So another thing to be aware of is that um, if you stay too long with this uh, fader up then it there's a chance that the actual track keeps on going in the background and and when you drop down the fader you're really um, far away from the moment you raised it and it sounds very different so l let me demonstrate this for you So let's let's do this uh, this technique I was talking about. If you stay up too long with your fader, look what happens. So I'm having a lot of fun. I'm triggering this effect. I'm completely out of touch with what's happening actually in the actual tracks. And you see, I'm playing around. But as soon as I, I lower it now, you see. What happens is that the, the tracks actually carry on playing in the background. We can't hear it. The original cannot be heard. But while I'm having fun with my fader, the tracks are actually uh, running through their length. And when I'm going back down and switching off the effect, we can hear the tracks at whatever place they're playing now. And that might be much further into the track, meaning that what's happening in the track now is completely different from what I had in my buffer and I was playing with. So that really can be a bit unsettling for the crowd. I wouldn't recommend that you stay up on your fader too long, you know. Play with it for a bar max and uh, 
you know, create that crescendo effect going up the fader, but then lower it down on the beat so you know you, you can stay in touch with what's happening in the background. Now another extra thing you could assign to this uh, big repeat is actually the pitch decay here. You could assign that to a, a different uh, fader here. Go to your browser and maybe set this up to 30% that's more musical and that's it. Now let's have a look. This is working. Yes, you see the pitch decay over here. This is now moving when I when I raise the fader, yeah? So let's hear what that does. Yeah, to be used very carefully, obviously, because it is very unstable for a crowd to have that pitch decaying so drastically. But it can be extremely powerful on the dance floor to, to really lower down. Imagine this pitch decay happening on a transition between two tracks, on the drop down, on the bridge of a new track. This really, really is the perfect transition tool for you. Mm -hmm. 